through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 185. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the release of Bachelorette, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about Isla Fisher. Mm -hmm. Wonderful woman. Yes. Fantastic actress. Yes. It's going to be fun to talk about some of her films. Mm -hmm. Let's get this party started. She's been around for a while, but the first sort of instance of her coming into my mm -hmm. consciousness was in 2004. I Heart Huckabees. Yes. We're talking David O. Russell, you mm -hmm. know, from Three Kings, later went on to do The Fighter. Yes. Kind of a confrontational guy. If you mm -hmm. ever saw the disagreements between yes. him and Lily Tomlin mm -hmm. from this film that leaked well, online. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because uh, it's it, it was like a double-edged sword kind of thing, because he would, he would purposely let the cameras roll longer after mm -hmm. takes and let people kind of improvise to get into that mode which has its downsides if the director is mad at you for not doing it well enough. Or if somebody's recording the director yelling yes. at somebody. So. Yes. Which the uh, best part about that is he storms out through a door in the set. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the, uh, was it, um, detectives that mm. are working in the realm of, what is it? Um, Existentialism? Existential, that's yes. the word I was looking for. That's Lily Tomlin and Dustin Hoffman's Hoffman, yep. character. Interestingly enough, this was their first film together. Wow. And why that's more interesting than just the fact that they haven't had a film together is the fact that originally both of them were the choice original choices for Popeye and Olive Oil in Richard Altman's Popeye. Which I don't think they would necessarily be good choices, but it's weird that they were both up for roles in a movie that long ago and since then have never had their past that, cross again. That's funny. But Popeye also sucks, so it worked well, out well for them. Yeah. And weird that Robert Altman did it, so that's, I a, know, whole, I know. that's, a, <laughs> that's a whole other story in and of itself. But you know... In terms of this film, I mean, Isla Fisher's part is really teeny. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, you have to even go online and see some of like the the fake commercials and stuff she did um, for the movie. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah, they made a bunch of fake corporations for yeah, the purpose of the movie, and that they did fake advertisements mm -hmm. for those corporations, stuff like that. I mean, in terms of like her actual time in the movie, yeah, like it's, it's pretty pretty minuscule. It's it's really tiny, but mm -hmm. she is. She's definitely somebody who catches your eye. I mean, mm -hmm. part of it's probably because she's redhead. Mm. I mean, redheads always sort of yeah. pop because they're more uncommon, yes. I guess you would say. I would um, say that's probably true. But she's also, I mean, she's attractive. She's very... Um, I feel like she has a very bubbly personality. Exactly. That's where I was going to go with this. She has a very, I don't know, bubbly, vivacious, whatever mm -hmm. you want to say, that is sort of like, she feels very energetic. Mm -hmm. And that's something mm -hmm. that you notice much more as yes. she goes on in her career. And I mean, I wouldn't say that she really necessarily makes a huge mark upon mm -hmm. this movie. Yeah. But it's one that was enough that it sort of caught my attention yes. to be like, who who was that? Mm -hmm. She looks sort of familiar, and maybe I'd seen her in something before that that I didn't even really pay attention or to. Or recognize yeah. or remember. Yeah, but probably. this was the first time I was like, hmm, okay, yeah. She seems like she'd be something. Getting her and Amy Adams screwed up a lot. Uh, yeah, I yeah, could totally see oh, totally I, I could yeah. actually see that very much so. Mm -hmm. So... When I say she's got a very bubbly personality that sort of, you know, <laughs> pops or whatever, it really came to fruition yes. just the next year with Wedding Crashers. Yes. Obviously, her role in that film was increased as she sort of played the love interest, sort of, mm -hmm. of Vince, Vince Vaughn. Vaughn. Yeah. Reluctant love interest. Or <laughs> his reluctant love yeah. He was a reluctant love Let's interest say of her. She, uh, she was the chaser, and he was the yes. chasey. Yeah. She was the predator. Yes. And he was the prey. He was the alien. Oh, little, wait, wrong, 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 wrong franchise. <laughs> um, I would argue that, you know, in terms of the comedic value of Wayne Crashers, and Wayne Crashers mm. is a very funny film, yeah. Iowa Fisher and Vince Vaughn were heart, head and tails, like the driving force behind it. Yeah. Owen Wilson, Rachel McAdams, very charming individuals, mm -hmm. but... But there was more like the actual plot driven. Yes. Vince Vaughn and Isla Fisher's was much more like that. It was so crazy yeah, and over comedic, the top. Comedic, almost yeah. like side subplot that could just do whatever it wanted because it didn't necessarily have to hold true with this whole movie, so... And, you know, I'm not going to say it was because of this, but it makes very clear sense the attraction between Iowa Fisher and her husband, Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, wow. Well, oh. Oh, did I you not? You I, did not. Know? I think oh. I knew it, but forgot it and re-remembered. I believe it. they were married before all this happened. Actually, wow. when he uh, 
started the Ali G show mm. on HBO, they moved to America, and she was with him at that point. Huh. And that was like 2002 or so. Wow. When that was all going on, 2001, 2002. So Interesting. They had been together long before all this happened. Wow. So Way to I, go, Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, for good on you for that, seriously. <laughs> but she, I mean, both of them are clearly talented yes. comedic people, and mm-hmm. so you could see how the two of them yeah. both would have a respect yeah. and an attraction for each other Kinda because crazy of crazy goofballs. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I, in terms of Wedding Crashers, I think it's... An, a, hilarious film mm-hmm. probably one of the i feel like one of the last good vince vaughn movies yeah i would probably say it's definitely he had a real bad slump right after it he's def- a lot of bad I mean, stuff after it even to this day he's been he's been very very missing more than hit <laughs> yeah. like, you know it's always fun you always enjoy these like teen choice nominations <laughs> oh, and stuff that I give you. <laughs> but there i mean i think it it very much is um representative of mm. Isla Fisher sort of popping because you know the Teen Choice Award she was nominated for both um, Choice Breakout Female mm. as well as Choice Hissy Fit mm. and <laughs> MTV Award she was nominated for Breakthrough Performance so I can see that clearly a lot of Hollywood was taking notice of yeah. this cute funny redhead who yeah. was sort of stealing the show honestly definitely in, yeah. in terms of wedding crashers and giving it more soul than it probably would have had yeah. otherwise i mean totally i, I think mean, it's interesting to note that uh following complaints from the united states congress the producers of the movie removed a printable purple heart that they had on a website so that you could print up your own purple heart and pick up women and get free drinks and people were complaining of all places to Congress. <laughs> and so it was I mean, really... I guess if you're dumb enough to fall for a printable purple heart, yeah. like, you know. I mean, I can, under- I can understand the, like, oh, it's a symbol of something awesome. You shouldn't defame it. But right. at the same time, it's, it's printable. Like, it's a paper purple heart. It's like heart. back in the early 2000s when Maxim would have things. Cut this out. It, it says sperm is negative calories. Your girlfriend will totally believe it. It's like. Yeah. If she does, then why did you need a card in the first place? Because she's you obviously do stealing with a stupid person. Use your brain, people. So, That's yeah. what it's there for. Check your references. That too. One of the toned down versions of Isla Fisher in a film that I largely actually don't enjoy that much mm-hmm. is Hot Rod. Never bothered to see. It. This is the Andy Samberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Lonely Planet? Lonely yeah, Island? Lonely Island. Yeah. Lonely Island. Akiva, uh, what's his name? Akiva Schaefer. It? Yeah, directed and, it. Uh, was it Jorma? Yeah. T- Tacone? I forget how Horma? Whatever. Yes. Um, you know, this is a film that is sort of built upon that um, uh, camp sort of mm, sensibility mm-hmm. where everything's sort of like, Everything, we're yeah, it's so dumb that it's funny. And I just, I don't, I'm not a camp person. Mm. Like, I never have been. I never was. And I went into this film knowing, honestly, very little about it. I mean, I didn't I didn't really watch Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I didn't really Same know here. much about Andy Samberg. And I just found it not funny. Like, it felt like, it just feels like everyone's trying too hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, it's funny because Isla Fisher is sort of like the one person in this movie that isn't really being campy comedic like she just plays like a regular Hmm. girl who likes andy samberg's character like she just happens to be like the one normal person in the movie yeah and you know (laughs) it's it's not like the film doesn't have talent in it you know andy samberg i like a lot of the the shorts he Mm -hmm. does for saturday night live um and even beyond that it's got bill Hader, it's got danny mcbride before i had really any sort of consciousness of how awesome both of them were (laughs) it's got will arnett playing isla fisher's dick boyfriend nice who's sort of andy samberg's competition it just i mean people will say you know this is a like a parody of 80s movies and blah 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 evil can evil yeah Yeah. it's i just i get you i just don't find it funny in the same Mm. way i don't find cop out funny as sort of like a parody of buddy cop action film stuff i think it's interesting to note that not only did i find this bit of trivia but that it was actually specifically written in imdb i didn't think imdb would so uh underhandedly zing and burn a movie with Mm. a trivia note but uh hot rod shares almost the exact same basic plot line as dirty work with Norm Macdonald, based on the fact, which also starred then current cast members of Saturday Night Live. Okay. But and both films were centered about an unsuccessful young man attempting to raise fifty thousand dollars for his father, a cranky ex-boxer needs a who surgeon. needs a heart yep. transplant. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wow. Isn't that's that, crazy. Isn't that weird? It's not even just like ex-boxer, same amount of money, heart which transplant. Is, 
Ironic, because I really like Dirty Work. Oh, I do too. So, Dirty Work is amazing. How did they go so wrong? And they got—I mean, and Dirty Ian Work. McShane, Ian McShane and Sissy Spacek are his mother and father in the movie. They're like, how, uh, how and see, Dirty Work is is the same kind of thing where it was like guy who was popular on Saturday Night Live with like some weird movie idea that seemed dumb, that didn't seem like it was going to be very good. Dirty Work managed to, I assume. I, based on your opinion, I would say Hot Rod didn't, and based yeah. on most people's opinion of it, that it didn't. For what it's worth, Akiva Schaefer has mm -hmm. also directed a bunch of stuff for Saturday Night Live. Only other real film credit, The Watch, mm. which just came out this year. With starring Vince Vaughn also. Yeah. From Wedding Crashers. Well, he wasn't. He I'm wasn't. just saying. Yeah. We have recurring it's people. like six degrees of Isla Fisher. <laughs> One of the more noteworthy performances uh, in terms of quality films across mm -hmm. the board that she's been involved with was The Lookout. Yes. We're talking just Corn Levitt. Mm -hmm. You know, this is was it the story of a um, a guy who has brain damage. Brain damage who has trouble, you know so, I'm not going to say it's like Memento but it sort mm. of plays with the sort of concept of what you know Yes, also. yes. He misses a lot of social cues if I remember correctly. He's kind of yes. socially awkward and just not like I can't remember things from X long ago, like as you said, not in Memento, but more just a fuzzy grasp on what is or is not real. Yeah. And so he kind of puts himself in a service job just so he doesn't have to worry about mm -hmm. dealing with these things. And I think Isla Fisher plays the love interest. Yeah, lovely. Yes. Uh, oh, the... yeah, lovely. That's right. <laughs> I was like, are you just making an adjective? Nope, that's her name. Yeah. Character name. Forgot about that. Oh, the... The Lookout is one of those, I would say, greatly underappreciated films. Yes. In the sense, I think most people have seen it, love it, mm -hmm. but not a lot of people have seen it. I feel it's, like it's the same with Brick, also with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, I mean, this. I definitely feel like there's been a few periods in his career. Like, early on, it was much more comedic. Mm -hmm. Then there's sort of the middle indie drama yeah. period where he got into, and now he's moved into, like, an action yeah. period in his career. Big blockbuster action, yeah. man. But, you know, you're right, absolutely right. This and Brick sort of came out in a very similar time frame. Mm -hmm. And... Both of them were, like, I believe, first-time directors. Mm, like, yeah, yeah, I, th I think so. Not no way of that, but Scott Frank, the guy who directed The Lookout, mm -hmm. won the Indie Spirit Award for Best First Feature. So Yeah, and he's yeah. written a bunch of stuff, too. I, I forget mm -hmm. what. He was a screenwriter oh, no, originally. Oh, no, he did Out of Sight, yeah, that's right. The Interpreter, yes. Get Shorty, Minority mm -hmm. Report. Yeah. Very prolific screenwriter. Sadly, not much in terms of directing. And, I mean... It's a shame because of mm -hmm. you see films like this and it's it's great and and I mean on him just having brain damage that the plot kind of involve kind of it kind of gets tangled into a bank heist mm -hmm. which is one of yeah, the yeah, interesting yeah. aspects of it but it's also interesting to note that both Sam Mendes coming up again and, and David Fincher were at some point attached to being directing wow which just gives you kind of an idea if you don't know anything about this movie maybe the tone. Mm -hmm. That, you know, if those are the kinds of people that might have been attached. And also, I find it interesting that Joseph Gordon Levitt, to help play somebody who's brain damaged, would purposely deprive himself of sleep and work out super hard at the gym right before shooting to give himself, make himself exhausted. He also hung out with people with actual brain damage and read a book called The Man with a Shattered World History of a Brain Wound. So. I appreciate that sort of, uh, you know, dedication, but that's the sort of same shit that got Heath Ledger into. <laughs> The uh, you know hey they were both ultimate. in ten things I hate about you maybe that's where you learned that oh, school of acting yeah we're just connecting all these dots Spencer. maybe but like yeah like Heath Ledger like locked himself yeah, in a hotel yeah. for I think like six weeks or something mm -hmm. to sort of perfect his there was Joker. also drugs though in that we don't necessarily well know I mean I, I think there was well, drugs involved in just but I also think part of those drugs be oh came no, yeah. because he was depriving himself of sleep and stuff oh, like I don't that doubt it, so it totally I'm just saying he probably had a thing with drugs before he I, did that. I, I respect it. Another person <laughs> in that same sort of vein, Christian Bale, has mm -hmm. done a lot of stuff to yes. push himself in terms of getting to a character. Every now and then we forget the actors are still and people outside of their roles. Totally. And and so, it's just sort of like, when you physically push yourself to figure out a character, I respect it, mm -hmm. but you're really, I mean, put yourself in danger, and I, I think, I really respect Iowa Fisher mm -hmm. for um, picking this film. You, you know, you mentioned some big name directors in it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's I guess Scott Frank's benefit that he mm -hmm. was able to direct his own project because yes. he wrote it. And pull it off pretty well. Pull I, it off very well. But I mean, ultimately, I think the budget was like $16 million, which mm. is dramatically less than it would have been with Sam oh, yeah. or David Fincher. Definitely. And, you know, this was definitely much more of a risk mm -hmm. with him than it would be with them. And I'm, I appreciate that she she does a lot of dramatic stuff, yes. even though she doesn't get a lot of credit for it. And that's something I wish Sasha Barry Cohen would do mm -hmm. as well, because he does it yeah. so well. And, you know, both of them are incredibly talented. Mm -hmm. She just tends to be a little bit more... Uh, 
wide in her versatility mm-hmm. in terms yeah. of picking projects. This is definitely one of those films that, without giving too much ro- away, definitely has some twists in it. So even s- things as simple as the bland description of her character in it is definitely different as yeah. the film goes on. Sure. Uh, another one that sort of has a more, I would say, toned down Isla mm. Fisher is the romantic dramedy, I guess mm. you would say. Definitely, maybe. Okay. This is the story of a man telling how he and his her, uh, his daughter's mother met to his daughter. Okay. And he has three sort of female suitors, if you will, that mm. he has relationships with. And he sort of tells the story of how his life got to the point of him having gotcha. the daughter and who his ultimate wife and mother mm, of his daughter mm-hmm. and stuff end up being... Gotcha. Is the mystery of the movie, hmm, interesting. and sort of who his love is and all How this sort of stuff. Style. Kind of, yeah. And you know, it's sort of uh, kind of a classic romantic dramedy mm. in a lot of ways. But it's got a great cast. I mean, I, I think Ryan Reynolds mm. is another incredibly versatile guy. Yeah. It's got Elizabeth Banks mm. and Rachel Weiss. Love them both. Rachel Weiss nice. as the two other main female Mm. suitors for him. And lucky Ryan Reynolds. Seriously. And Isla Fisher as well. So, you know, you talk about a great group of people. Uh, Blonde, a black hair, brunette, or um, redhead. redhead. So you got the whole spectrum. spectrum. Getting albino in there. Yeah. And so, you know, it's it's, it's complicated because it's got both his sort of story of uh, his relationship with them as well as, you know, his just mm. life in general and mm-hmm. you know his daughter's played by abigail breslin i think oh, this is shortly wow. after little miss sunshine okay. came out so she was just on her rise to stardom nice. and it's 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 a decent film i mean hmm. i i think you know it's easy to write it off as just a romantic dramedy but i think it's a very decent film and you know it's again you know we talk about teen choice awards and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff isla fisher got nominated for uh comedy for this so hmm. you know Way to go. She definitely has gotten a lot of recognition yeah. as an actress. Especially because Maybe not comedic. Academy Award, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, Academy Awards never really respect yeah. com- comedy actors. It's true. But, you know, it, and whatever it is. Funny females, we need, we need, we more, need more funny females. Yep. Because yep. there's nothing... Women are hilarious, and a lot of times they... For whatever reason, don't get the chance. Well, you want, you want a sort of a, a perspective on mm. the subject? Isla Fisher, Sasha Baron Cohen... Both married, mm-hmm. both incredibly funny people. Mm-hmm. Sasha Baron Cohen has been doing lead comedic projects for yeah. over a decade yeah. now. Her lead female comedic, mm. I think it was probably, you know, um, Confessions of a Shopaholic was the first mm. significant lead comedic yeah. role she had, and that was 2009. Mm-hmm. So it was almost a decade before wow. she really got an opportunity to be even lead. though mm-hmm. even though she would i would argue as just as talented comedically hmm. as sasha baron cohen it's an interesting uh statement to make spencer i i, w- I would say she is i mean she's definitely and i would say that that's an interesting <laughs> statement to make leave it there i, I, I just don't <laughs> think she's not but that's a pretty big I, th- I would love to see sort of like a borat equivalent with her mm. i think it would be awesome considering <laughs> no. what she did in wedding crashers i think it could totally be done and it would be it'd be interesting it'd be let's just say that it would definitely be interesting i vote for it so <laughs> let's make that happen confessions of a shopaholic is the story of a girl who loves fashion kind of uh is trying to weasel her way into a magazine like vogue mm-hmm. on the way there she ends up taking a job at i think it was like a political magazine okay. and ends up sort of beginning to make her way there and she falls in love with the editor of that hmm. her sort of um ruse that she uses to get in there sort of falls apart you know it's sort of a, a romantic High dramedy yeah. it's another sort of romantic dramedy hmm. much more sort of comedic i would say than definitely maybe gotcha but you know she's the lead in this she's sort of the one who's going after this dream you know her father and mother are played by john goodman and what's it uh, joan cusack joan cusack i mean i you've had one movie um not her mother but um Sissy Spacek was the mother and mm, Hot Rod. Hot Rod. You have John Goodman as the father in Confessions of a Shopaholic. I think these, those are probably the two, two of the greatest <laughs> movie parents of all time. Like they would be so awesome yeah. to have as parents. They're so awesome. I love and, John Goodman. 
you know, I think her chemistry with Hugh Dancy is, is good in the movie. I think she's, again, you know, very funny, but this is much more sort of a re realistic funny as opposed gotcha. to, like, Wedding Crashers. Mm -hmm. She's so over not the top. Not slapstick? No. And, you know, again, you know, she's nominated for, um, oops, sorry, definitely maybe it was not nominated for a Teen Choice Award. It was this one that was nominated for okay. a Teen Choice Award uh, for comedy. And she, she's very funny in it, you know. The film was also named for romance in terms of mm. the Teen Choice Award. So she's she's very talented. And she, let's see, I mean, in terms of box office, the film made $105 million. Whoa. So I don't know if it was necessarily a financial success. It's probably a moderate success. Probably because how much it cost? I don't know off the top of oh, my okay. head. They, didn't, they don't have they oh, didn't gotcha, give that information that. now. Okay. But, you know, this is a Jerry Bruckheimer film, surprisingly huh. enough. Wow. Yeah. So it probably wasn't super cheap. I hope it was successful enough that they wouldn't necessarily give her more opportunities because she, she did yeah. a good job carrying the film. Hmm. She she performed the role perfectly. And I think it's interesting that she in real life, is 14 years younger than Joan Cusack, who played her mother. Oh, that's sort of the absurdity of a lot of these type of movies. So. I know, but it's just, you know, it's a... It's just, I like factoid, Spencer. Yeah, it's a good fact. I appreciate that. Let's move to last year. Mm -hmm. uh, animated film. Yes. Academy Award winner for Best Animated Film. Mm -hmm. Rango. Yeah. Johnny Depp, Lizard, yep. Western. Yes. This is not the first animated film she's been in. She was in um, Horton Hears a Who. Yes, that's right. Rango, obviously a much more notable one. A, it won Best Animated Feature. Mm -hmm. But she also played the female protagonist mm -hmm. in the film opposite Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Which, I don't know if you think, you know, says you've, you've made it pretty far in Hollywood. Yeah. But getting the opportunity to be opposite Johnny Depp. Kind of be his love interest, sort of. Yeah, still yeah. obviously his love interest is yeah. there. It's not bad, even if it's animated. Yeah. Have you seen this movie? I have. I have. What did you think of this movie? Uh, before before I, I give my... Uh, probably minority opinion of this movie uh you know i thought it was okay i didn't think it was uh groundbreakingly amazing i feel like the film was more of a like tribute or homage to westerns than it was a self-contained film yeah so i feel so like they had all these they were like let's make an animated film let's pick a theme that we can harken back to that we'll get the adults in and get kids in too let's do a, a, a animated western and so then they focused so much on the idea of what would be in a light-hearted western that they mm. maybe lost the because honestly as while i didn't dislike the film in any way the character of rango and his forward plot momentum is completely uninteresting yeah I it's mean, just kind of my perspective of this film is very beautiful animation. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, definitely. I respect well animated, Gore Verbinski, animated. good mm -hmm. on him for that. First animated film of his. Oh my god, I found this plot like film so dull. Like it was like the western aspect is cool, but there's like 18 villains, yeah, which I thought really bothered me because you're like, oh, that's the main villain. Oh no, it's the yeah. he's the, oh no, he's not the main. Oh, yeah. and it's not that main yeah. villain. And it's sort of like, what is going on? And, and then they just start throwing stuff in, like the man with no name just shows up at some point. And it's mm -hmm. like, what does this have to do with well, any they, the spirit of the west? Yeah, that's what that's what's supposed to be. And they've been talking about that the whole movie, but still. Yeah, I, I, one of the things that's the problem with it also is that, I mean, yes, for a kid's movie, this isn't as relevant, so you, it maybe can be glossed over for people who want to show this to a young mm -hmm. kid, but for someone like, for an adult watching it, uh, it you know from the beginning exactly how it's going to go based on the fact that he's a f trying to act like a tough guy with a fake persona, and he, so you mm -hmm. know eventually when it's the most crucial, people are going to find out he's not really a tough guy, and he's going to run, but then he's going to have a change of heart and he's going to come back and save everybody and so the fact that they tossed in all those random villains and like the people's woes never seemed to be his woes except when people might catch him in a lie mm. it was just kind of problematic yeah i just had a lot of trouble caring about rango no yeah I, like i said as a main character he was really kind of uninterestingly bland and got a note Definitely, maybe reunion. Abigail Breslin was also mm. in the film. So I thought found it interesting that you know, because talking about the whole Western angle, Rattlesnake Jake, the villain was modeled mm. after Lee Van Cleef. Mm. Um, the first cat that Beans talks to in the town dirt. Beans being Iowa Fisher's yes, character. Yes, the mouse uh, is uh, does a vocal impression of the actor Put Pat Buttram, who was <laughs> in. Um, You'd recognize him if you saw him. If I remember correctly, he's one of the Daryls from New Heart way back oh, when. Oh, wow. Uh, very familiar okay. Western yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, also that Rango refers to Priscilla, uh, one of the other mice, as his little sister, which is a reference to what Rooster Cogburn calls 
Maddie Ross and True Grit. Interesting. So you have all these little I mean, things I, that were. I appreciate like Easter eggs like that. That's no, yeah, all I'm good. Exactly. It's, just, it's just the film is not engaging enough for no, me to really enjoy. It's funny that it won you know best animated feature. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it helps that Cars Two happened to be the Pixar film that came out this year. And this was also the first Lucas or ILM. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Animated film. Yeah. Lu Lucas yeah. film. So. It should, should also note that. Well, it's funny because Pixar was actually George Lucas's back in the day, but that's not I hide their hair today. Um, it actually lost the Golden Globe for Best Animated Feature to Tintin, which hmm. not necessarily a huge shock mm -hmm. because Golden Tintin. Globes, mm -hmm. Hollywood foreign press, yes. foreign people love them some Tintin. Mm -hmm. So it's true. Strangely enough, it lost to that. But it won the Academy Award. Has one of my favorite. I mean, I love. I love the. That's the sad thing is there's so many little things in it that are great, but it's the big stuff that holds it together that's not. I think Isla Fisher's character of Beans is kind of interesting. Mm. I wish yeah. there had been more of her. I agree. She kind of is in the film, and then disappears for a while and comes mm -hmm. back. And she's much more that strong Western wo frontier woman. But she's attitude. also got that quirky family background mm -hmm. and stuff, which I would have loved just more of. Mm -hmm. But she just sort of isn't yeah. present enough in the film yeah. so bummer on that i'm mm -hmm. sure they'll probably make a rango too if you do more beans yes. strangely <laughs> enough as that sounds so. more beans says the mcguffin <laughs> podcast the Finally, MacGuffin gives rango a more beans rating yeah that's our synopsis mm -hmm. that brings us to this friday september 7th mm -hmm. bachelorette keeping in that vein of Bachelor crazy? Yeah, Ladies you know, that's, that's the sort of thing that sort of kills me about this film. This is sort of about three friends who are asked to be bridesmaids uh, at a woman they used to ridicule in high school. Mm -hmm. And it's got a great cast. Great yes. cast. You know, you got uh, Lizzie Kaplan. Liz Lizzie Kaplan. You got Isla Fisher. Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst. You got also supporting characters of James Marsden mm -hmm. and Adam Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, all, it's, all awesome. Do you have on there the name of uh, their Rebel Wilson, who yeah. is great in, um, has a little small role in Workaholics, was also in yes. Bridesmaids, which is unfortunate. But the, the thing that kills me about this is sort of like, okay, you know, I'm all for female-driven crazy comedy. Yes. Awesome for you for mm -hmm. doing that. But really, why do they all have to be sort of tangentially connected to... Um, weddings mm. like okay maybe definitely maybe or not definitely maybe for a good time call uh yes that's that's sort of a strong female driven comedy but not mm -hmm. wedding centric mm -hmm. but it's sort of like right after bridesmaids why yeah. on earth are you going to do another bridesmaid driven crazy comedy i think what it is I, th I think there is a in the same way that people look at maybe six or seven years ago people looked at superhero movies where they were like there's this untapped nerd market that clearly are coming out and are spending their money but how do we appeal to them normally we'll make a comic book movie that'll pull them in but also be a normal story mm. in that same way i feel like the the whole wedding themed crazy ladies is like pulling in the people who don't give a crap about weddings and traditional family in that sense the younger people who might like the edgier comedy but still being like in the end it's a love story and someone's getting married and yeah. i think that they can maybe try to appeal to the female demographic but also grab a newer edgier audience and try to lump it together because rom-coms clearly have one audience yeah. and they don't get outside of that I, th I think it's just that hollywood is so chicken shit Oh, well, that, that's definitely true. That they are like, the only way we're going to get success with yep. outrageous female comedies is let's just do what Bridesmaids yep. did. And and, sort yep. of, Which was funny because when Bridesmaids came out, everybody thought it was a ladies' hangover, and it was nothing like a ladies' yeah. hangover. And so then it's so funny to have... But that was, yeah, just wedding also. But, but yeah. to have Bachelorette look like it's like, a more crass Bridesmaids. It's like... I don't know how much more crass you can get than bridesmaids, honestly. When you're <laughs> shitting in the street and a sink, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how much more you can really do than that. But, you know, it's... it's The Red Band trailer's pretty funny, and I love Lizzie Kaplan, so... Yeah, I love Lizzie Kaplan, love other people like, you know, James Mars and Adam Scott. Oh, um, yeah, Adam Scott. Isla Fisher also love her as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's got good things like that. The director, Leslie Headland, um, don't really know much about the... Uh, I don't know if it's even a woman or a man. I'm going to say it's a woman. Um... But actually, it is. I remember looking it up. She was a writer for Terriers, which is really. Oh. Did you see Terriers? No, it's it a good the, show. Oh, it, good show. It was a show. Yeah. Oh, I'm. It was I'm, a show. Must be thinking something else. It's a, a show by Sean Ryan, which had uh, Donald Logue in it for one hmm. series, sort oh. of a private detective, hmm. and it was a very good show, a lot of fun, but sadly canceled. And you know, 
it's it's sort of like that is her only credit really mm -hmm. and she's enough. wrote and directed this right yes yeah and so that's a big sort of question mark mm -hmm. and I like a lot of the people in it, but yes. I don't necessarily know how they all come together as well as like Bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. Bridesmaids had people who had worked together, you know, Kristen mm -hmm. Wiig yeah. and Maya, uh, Rudolph. Maya Rudolph had worked together for years. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Wiig wrote the script. With a friend of hers who yeah. also and did so, them for years. You know, it had all these elements that were really mm -hmm. sort of tightly connected. Yeah, agreed. And sure, I didn't know like Melissa McCarthy at that point, yeah. but she's clearly talented. Mm -hmm. This one has a lot more question marks to me. And I agree. I just... I'm not completely sold on it, but I'm curious enough that I'll definitely go see it. Mm, mm -hmm. So that's so, sort of yeah. my perspective on yeah, it. But I would agree with bottom that. line, big fans of Violet Fisher, I yes. would say it's safe to say. Yes. So let us know your feedback and uh, join us next time for our DVD rundown of uh, the week of September 11th. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Never forget, Spencer. Never forget. <laughs> I'll and wear my most red, white, and blue. We'll see what we shirt. can do about that, yeah. And uh, give us your feedback mm -hmm. at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Start some conversations with yeah. us. Come on. Phone number, 323-761-9842. Leave us dirty messages. We'll take them. We'll play them. You know, yeah. it's all good stuff. Uh, we're on iTunes, mm -hmm. Blip, mm. Miro, yep. Roku. Check in. Get glue. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Like, don't even try to buy the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.